Well, thank you everybody for coming to my presentation today. So today I'm going to be talking a little bit about my Global Action Plan, A Path Towards Reconciliation. Now, just to sort of get everybody situated in what I'm going to be talking about, I'm going to start with highlighting some background information and context. So dealing with the Indigenous communities in Canada, when I was doing my research, obviously, undeniably, um, one must recognize the establishment of residential schools. So that first started in 1831, and the last residential school closed in 1996, which isn't that um, long ago. So the goal of the establishment of this system was the complete assimilation of the indigenous culture into sort of European ideals and cultures. Um, throughout this period of time, approximately 150 indigenous children were removed from their homes and taken to these schools. And from that, 3,200 deaths resulted, not to mention the enduring trauma and both physical and mental abuse that accompanied that. And the whole purpose of this was to sort of get rid of that distinctive culture that the population had. So when I was doing my research, a few things about that culture that sort of came to life to me was first the respect for all creation, so that symbiotic relationship with humans and the earth and everybody around it. Uh, next, community involvement. So especially within communities, you know, the elders teaching um, the younger generation, the younger students, you know, um, the values of the culture so that they can pass that forward and keep the, um, the culture going on. Um, that holistic approach to learning, so realizing not only necessarily the knowledge, but applying that into the surrounding world, and spirituality, so recognizing that there's something bigger than the individual, and you're all working towards a more common goal, and you're all part of sort of like that greater plan. Um, now, the relationship between those schools and that distinctive culture has obviously created a lasting legacy. Um, that has been seen through the impairment of Native communities, either through economic disparity, but also the trauma that has resulted. So, and that comes forth through either substance abuse, alcoholism, or you know the higher rates of abuse on and off reserves. So, given that. Um, the why for my global action plan is because that exists, because that's a part of Canada's history. And the need is because as Canadians, we need to reestablish those broken relationships. And to do that, um, what I'm going to be doing is bridging the gap that exists between specifically youth from Indigenous and non-Indigenous cultures. And that will be done through facilitating communication through a student-based learning forum. Now, to do that, um, students need to recognize the past, realize the issues of the present, and then combine that into sort of create um, new relationships and um, developments for the future. So given that, my big idea is obviously reconciliation. Um, I sort of got my inspiration from the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. Um, what they have done is establish a set of guidelines that people should follow in order to you know, get that reconciliation, that um, mending of broken relationships. Now, those are simply guidelines. So for me, I feel like the most important part is you know, getting that um, social advocacy and having people feel like they need to take a role in it. And that's one, obviously also one of the most challenging parts. So make, make people feel that they, too, are accountable. So to do that, I will be focusing on the most I think the most powerful and uh, demographic, which is youth, because they are the future of the nation. And from that, um, the more positive future and um, those relationships will be established. So as I mentioned, the main issue is to make people feel like they need to have that active involvement and work towards um, that better relationship. So to do that, I will be promoting the communication against um, with all through the FAIR program. Now, FAIR stands for First Nations Aboriginal Indigenous reconciliation. And what that club does is it takes active, conscious members of the community so that they can work towards um, the actual process of reconciliation. So for you guys and sort of to understand where I'm coming from, how I'm approaching this, I'm just going to quickly um, talk about my own personal development in the Global Leadership Diploma and the program and sort of who I am. So there are a few things that um, really make up who I am and that define me. Um, first is family. So growing up, I have had an incredibly supportive family that has instilled me with very strong values. And looking towards my future endeavors and my current ones, I know that I have utmost support. And it's easy to go into something knowing that you have people who believe in you and who believe in your capabilities. Um, now school. School is important. It's a privilege to attend a school like Appleby because it offers you 
with all the education, the basis you need in order to actually make a difference. So when you're going into something, having that background knowledge and understanding sort of the situation, the past, and all the different intricate elements that interact is incredibly important. Um, and that's all great, but you need the exposure and that hands-on experience in order to connect the two and develop that more holistic approach to learning. So what I like to do is I like to take what I learn at school, apply it into immersed situation, and then from that and the experiences that I've learned through that hands-on approach, take action for myself and pursue something that I am passionate about. So for the FAIR Club, um, I have sort of developed a system of pillars similar to those of Appleby College that would reflect the values of the club. So awareness, education, appreciation, and action. So I'm just going to talk about a few of the necessarily like sample activities that would fall under each of those pillars of the student-led organization. So I know Appleby is currently working on a land research project. So uh, an example would be that students could be involved in looking up the various um, land rights to not only schools, but sort of community communities. For example, Mississauga, where I live, looking about um, the civilizations and the communities that existed there before. Next, education. For English this year, we've read a lot of um, Joseph Boyden's books. And what that does is it sort of lets people realize that um, Indigenous people, it's not only what you learn in history class, but the way they interact in modern day um, environments. So maybe reading a textbook, um, a chapter of the book, and sort of discussing it and really diving in and seeing what the intricate elements are and the opinions that are being expressed through that. And personally, when I was doing my background research, um, I found that videos were incredibly powerful and important because not only do does the stories come to life, but you see the emotion that the people who have been affected and that have, and that um, really makes sort of a trigger and develops that sort of, okay, that accountability, which is the main premise of my um, project, which is developing that within people. Um, next, appreciation. So I know middle school had Stephen Paquette come in and talk about sort of um, the Aboriginal culture and how that interacts with modern day environments. So I'm um, sort of talking about that and getting people t out there to express um, what it is like so that people have a better understanding. And finally, action. So attending regional conferences. I know Rev, I was supposed to go to the Canadian Roots Exchange Conference, but unfortunately I got sick and couldn't go. Um, but attending conferences like that, that bring people together, people who are there for a common cause, and sort of getting that discussion and that awareness open. Um, so Appleby could potentially host a local conference with um, sort of what is learned from experiences like that. And there's, a, there's also a plan for a Nelson House intercultural trip, so the club could also organize some sort of initial teleconferencing with the group up there as an extension. So when I was doing my sort of research in, okay, how do I want this to move on forward, um, my, the main organization that came out to me was Canadian Roots, because our missions are very very aligned. So their mission is to bridge the gap which exists between Indigenous and non-Indigenous youth. And it's not necessarily by, you know, um, having those sort of like textbook, okay, like the rules and regulations, but getting that social awareness in people and getting them to actually take action for themselves. So essentially for people to sa stand in solidarity and to promote that education, respect towards um, positive and forward thinking reconciliation. And the way that they do that is through a variety of programs. So their first program is the exchange program. They organize um, exchanges between individuals of different communities so that they can get immersed in that situation. Um, next, they have conferences, um, like the National Youth Reconciliation Conference, where people of like-minded um, attitude come together and sort of discuss their views and opinions. And the Youth Reconciliation Initiative is something that I found really interesting. It's where a team of any community in Canada can apply to become um, a youth reconciliation team. And what they do is they get leadership training. Once they've been approved, they get leadership training. Um, it's a few-day course that trains on facilitation, sort of the the social awareness you need to have when going into it. And their main goal is to organize a community event. So an event that brings people together to reflect. Um, and the main premise of this is because clubs and teams realize their own vision. So they're not following a set vision, but and that's the essence of reconciliation, to create the vision that people see the imminent need to address. And something that's happening this summer in Toronto is the wall to action. So in June, um, they're going to be putting up part of a different team, a mural, um, that explores the power of art as sort of getting, you know, those ideas out into the open. Art is a resistance and sort of expressing reconciliation um, in the more public setting. 
So the way that my gap sort of works is through a five-year timeline. So currently I am in year one. So what I have done this year is I have brought together sort of all my ideas to create um, a plan based on the theory. I've submitted the club proposal and I've started canvassing around uh, my boarding house as well as a few members um, who have gone to conferences about um, support and initiative for the club. Um, now because sort of my plan depends and is contingent upon um, that approval of the club, I've developed a two-pronged approach whereas if it does approve and if it doesn't get approval. So I'm going to be talking a bit about that. So if it does get approved, obviously next year the main idea is to create that curriculum, so more in depth, more in detail, sort of establish those pillars, separate them so that um, the, the pillars are seen throughout um, the course of the school year. Um, next campaign, so the club would look to create an awareness campaign at Appleby and sort of raise that awareness between all individuals of the community and reach out to Canadian Roots to see if if there is a will within the club to become one of those youth reconciliation initiatives so that you get that support as well. Now if unsuccessful approval, the main thing is to survey for feedback. So why didn't approve? And the main reason that I can think of is because there isn't that interest. And that obviously is an issue because as Canadians, um, we should have that interest and we should have that. So what can I do in order to make people feel like that is important and that is something that needs to be addressed. Um, explore university implementation. So next year I'm going to be attending McGill University and I've already looked into the clubs and organizations that fit there. So come fall, I'm sort of talking to them and seeing if, not necessarily if they want to totally switch over to my program, but at least getting some of my concepts and some of my plans um, transferred into that. And also reach out to CRE personally to become one of the um, vision mentors. Um, now year three, if the club has been successfully approved, that would be the second year. So consider possibly a trip organization to either a conference or to Nelson House, part of that intercultural exchange. A youth program, so maybe going into younger members of the community and sort of talking to them to sort of um, bridge out and expand. Um, and partnership with other secondary schools in the communities to sort of develop that network and keep building on outward. And once again, unsuccessful approval, you know, adapt and make changes and implement, implement it based on feedback in other places. So expand the scope um, in different schools and solidify already ideas that I've established in the second year at my university. So year four and five kind of brings the two together because ultimately the same goal um, is experienced in both. Um, so review and implement feedback from both involved parties. So as it is um, intercultural and it's you know that exchange of communication, you need to get the feedback from both parties. So seeing, okay, maybe at the end of the year, what did you like the most? What didn't you like? What would you like to have seen? And sort of implement the feedback so that um, the program is developed to um, benefit both involved parties. So I would continue to run the program. Um, if it were at Appleby, um, calling in on club meetings, you know, getting that sort of teleconferencing, making sure that you know the club is running towards the envision that I had initially but also if the students um, you know see it going in a different direction realizing that it's it the whole premise is it's their initiative so um, accepting that and trying to helping them to forge their own path um, and obviously if I were to be in the university setting um, I would be there hands-on and working towards that so introduced to other schools as I mentioned in the community and and even in um, where I am in Quebec, and attending reconciliation conferences uh, personally to continue to be involved and engaged and you know, stay present on the matters and get involved with Canadian Roots as a reconciliation leader, so apply for that position. Um, now year five, so I, at McGill I will be studying um, business with Desk Hotel Management, but my ultimate goal is to go into law, so focusing on maybe on you know, the different aspects of what I could achieve through law, so tying that into my global action plan, maybe resource scarcity and looking into water rights on reserves in the future and how that's gonna cause um, issues or the challenges that's gonna rise, especially with global warming and things like that, and continue to be involved with programs and reconciliation initiatives just to you know, stay active um, and stay passionate about the subject. So to know that everything is working, I've identified a few indicators of growth. So first, the successful communication, so that that bridge has been established, people are talking about it, and um, you know that the communication is there and it's active. Um, increased awareness, so the workings of the past are brought to the present and people feel that there is a need to understand them and to address them, so there's that aspect. And then finally, the positive discussion, so um, 
people working towards establishing solutions, having their voices expressed, and sort of um, melting together in order to create that more cohesive future. Now, working towards my global action plan, I am currently on track for year one completion, but obviously there have been challenges starting from scratch. So initially, um, when I was this summer thinking about my global leadership diploma, I was listening to an interview on CBC Radio um, where the head of the Calgary District School Board sort of addressed the education gap that exists between Indigenous and non-Indigenous students. So initially that was my inspiration. I was going to sort of maybe make contact with her and try and address that in Ontario. But given you know, my expertise and my limited knowledge about you know, the young youth um, education, I figured that I would address it from a different side. So as opposed to the education, the more social aspect. And that's sort of where my gap changed from educational to cultural and social exchange. Um, next, method of facilitation. So it's all said and done. It's nice to say, OK, they're going to be friends. People are going to talk about it. But how are you going to get that to happen? So, that's when I came up with the idea of you know, getting that um, student-led club and that um, sort of facilitation so that people feel like they, it's their initiative and they are part of it so that it's not just people like telling them to communicate, but that it's something that they want to be doing, they want to be involved with. And then obviously an ongoing issue, um, a challenge is communication, so getting the word out there, making those relationships and expanding um, into the community and seeing you know, the successes that that poses. So bringing all those factors together, that has has been my global action plan to date. Are there any questions? One is a comment and one is a question. Okay. Um, and the comment is, I know that you said that you're interested in looking at some of the land, um, land mm -hmm. rights issues and some of the statements that are coming up. Yeah. One thing I think that's probably good for you to know is it's, a big, it's quite a big controversy within uh, First Nations communities. Mm -hmm. um, they don't always appreciate them, and so it might be good to find out a little bit of how the Indigenous communities feel about them and who those statements are really for. Um, the, I've just spoken to a few folks who were actually at conferences yeah. who actually were discussing that exact issue. So it's something in terms of just that sensitivity that might be good, which kind of leads me to my other question. And you know, I've worked with Nikhil, so with similar kind of yeah, issues. Yeah. You know, one of the things that um, I'm curious about, knowing that you are a foreign actor going in to mm -hmm. try to do something, what kind of things are you doing to mitigate risk, I suppose, in that mm -hmm. area? And to also, if in, if you are bridging commun you know connections between mm -hmm. communities in a way that won't be seen as you know paternalistic or you know a colonial or all the things that you're trying to kind of work against. Yeah. And I know that we were at that workshop with Dr. Palmer, so I know you've talked about some of those things. But I just yeah. figured that might be something I'd like to hear a little bit about. Okay. Um. So in terms of that, I think sensitivity and having that sort of awareness and understanding that you are going into a sensitive. Um, you know, situation is really important. And in order to seem that you're not sort of like pushing yourself on there, I think it's important to take it slowly. So to establish those, rep uh, those um, relationships over time and develop that sort of bond of trust. So I know when I was doing it, um, Dr. Palmer, as you mentioned, she said, don't just go in there and like say, okay, I want to start this. Like you have to use already established channels and sort of put yourself forward and see if there is, you know, that need to establish the communication or that desire to as well. So being conscious and mindful of um, the situation that they are in and if they want um, your involvement or not and, right. and how to sort of, you know, go about that um, slowly and with care and, you know, make sure that you're not enforcing yourself upon anybody. And, and to that end, um, just to maybe take a look at, at Native Studies um, departments at McGill yeah. and also clubs too that yeah, might exactly. be able to have a little sort of exchange with folks. Yeah, and I was also, care. there's also some courses that address that, yeah. especially in the politics um, yeah. area, so maybe even talking to professors and if they have yeah. any ongoing um, research or if they're involved in any initiatives, you know, talking to them and maybe yeah. like hopping on board, something like that. Yeah, 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 great. Okay, thank you. Lauren, you did a really wonderful job. Oh, thank and I you. know how hard you've been working on this all year, so I'm very, very excited to hear this presentation. Um, my question is similar to what Dr. Hurley said, and it's yeah. just a follow-up, and I know that we've spoken about this, but how will you ensure that both uh, students from 
Appleby and from the high schools that they're partnering with mm -hmm. um, are benefiting from the program. Mm -hmm. So I think at the end of the year, what I had planned to do is doing, you know, that sort of like feedback at the end of the year. So both both groups would do that. So, you know, something that they liked of the year, something that they didn't like, something that they wish could be changed, and any visions they see it for. So sort of combining those two and making sure there's a pure balance between them um, so that both both parties are equally as, you know, are working towards it together. I think that's wonderful. Maybe just add in a midterm sort of review yeah. process to yeah. just yeah, for sure. making sure that it's on. Yeah, throughout yeah. the year. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, I think we're all going along the we're all going along Definitely, the same. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> to get off track. Kind of yeah, that's what I'm trying to do if I want to go in a different direction. But um, and it feels like I'm kind of, we're kind of harping on the thing, but just just from my own personal experience. Yes. Um, how do you? How one of the things that I can see as a risk is because if I understand, so it's like you know you have a group. Is it, there's a club at Appleby? Yeah. And then we're going to be partnering. With, yeah. That's, and then the chat as well. Yeah. About that idea. How do you be sensitive to kind of power dynamics in that relationship? Mm -hmm. um, how do you, on this side, how do you educate the, the students going from the Alphabet side to uh, to work with them and, and understand? Um, I mean, and I say this with uh, even with some reservation because I don't think I fully appreciate and understand the power dynamics going on. So maybe if you could touch on that a little bit about how you might approach that with the students at Alphabet and how you might. All right, so um, just sort of taking from the Canadian Roots model, what they first do is they do that um, leadership workshop when you're developing that youth reconciliation initiative. And what that touches on is that focuses on, um, you know, the issues of sensitivity, that power dynamic, and sort of getting that base understanding of the history and of the present situation. So sort of modeling, so the first period wouldn't necessarily be like jump straight into it, but like sort of that transition period of learning about it, how are you going to deal with it, maybe possible situations that might arise, and just making sure that students are aware of the situation they're going into and to maintain that sort of sensitivity, but also that excitement that they want to be engaged and involved. Okay, awesome. Um, my question is, I'm going to go Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You've talked a lot about this. Yeah. Uh, fantastic presentation, by the way. Thank you. And I think this is an essential issue. This is a really important issue, so I'm glad you chose it. Um, my question is about Appleby Community, because yeah. you're obviously not going to be here mm -hmm. to see the club continue. So how are you going to ensure, firstly, initial interest, mm -hmm. and also ensure the longevity of the club? How are we going to keep this going? How are you going to keep up the momentum if you are not here? Yeah. So. As I have submitted the club now, um, I'm obviously leaving, so um, I have started talking to a few people and the main important thing, because my whole club is about people having that own initiative within themselves, um, seeing if there is that initiative. So if no one signs up next year, like that's obviously an issue. And to do that, you have to tackle that within each and every student of the member of the Appleby community. So maybe having some people I'd obviously be involved, I'd come back or like visit through Skype or like teleconferencing and things like that, but maybe organizing, you know, presentations, awareness campaigns so that people feel like there is that need and there is that issue. And then with that, I feel um, if you have even a few people that are really passionate about it, that the club will survive through their leadership and through, um, you know, their actions. And I'd obviously be super, not supervising, but coming back and just making sure that, you know, everything's on track, the, the pillars are there, you know, the values are there, the vision's there for what I have planned, as well as integrating if their new opinions, their new ideas, and sort of trying to get that together to move forward in the future. So if we're into that, well, I know I'm like thinking of those scenarios, but what if, what if things uh, go bad in the club? Let's put it that way. What if there's a need to do a reset in terms of the ways that folks are approaching the issue or... In that sense, how, how involved will you be to know, like, say, changes in, I don't know, disposition or relationship between the, the two mm -hmm. schools? Or it's sort of like, the, I mean, this is kind of a worst case scenario. Yeah. But, like, if things ended up, you had a club, but then it kind of, you wanted to go this way, and then it started to kind of go that way. Like in a worse direction? Yeah. yeah. Like something that you, it's sort of like, oh, that wasn't what I was hoping it yeah. was going to be, and it could be negative. You know? Yeah. So if like that negative relationship is established to know about it, I'd have to talk to, you know, both. I'd stay involved and like, you know, 
not checkups, but like, you know, yeah. um, find out on both parties how that's working. And if it's going in a really bad direction, I guess bring it back to square one, if there still is that desire for involvement. So, you know, going back to the education, that um, leadership training and sort of getting the people, okay, back focused, and this is, we're not going in that direction, we're going in this positive direction and sort of reinstilling that, that light within people. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, and I, this is, I, I, and I, I don't want to sound like going down like a, um, uh, <laughs> the worst case scenario situation. <laughs> I'm going to do it. It was a fantastic presentation, yeah, and, and as you know, yeah. like I think this is this is vital. This yeah. is so vital. I, I could, I uh, maybe I'm not giving enough credit, but I could see a scenario where, depending on how the club works, and it certainly is that the club takes a more uh, like an appropriate but a more radical approach to some of these issues. And when you, when, you, when you talk to a lot of groups in the First Nations, even CRE itself, they got some pretty radical ideas, yeah. mm -hmm. um, which probably wouldn't necessarily jive with some of the, um, the, the worldview of the typical Appleby family, Appleby parents, Appleby community, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Um, how might, what might their role be if, if, if things kind of, not, a, not necessarily a negative trajectory, but a trajectory where people start saying, hey, this really is an issue, and by the way, I think Appleby should be doing this, and Appleby should be doing this, and Appleby should be doing this, and then all of a sudden, whether it comes from, say, the board, or it comes from the, the higher ups, or it comes from maybe a group of families saying, well, hold on a second here, like, this is, this is, this is not what we signed on for. Like, yeah. um, how might you see your role in that? In so I think it's important to realize the, like, the, the bounds, the area which you're working in, so realizing how far people are willing to go and how much they want to be involved and maintaining within that. If you're in the setting of Appleby, you know, um, maybe trying if the club wants to, to push the boundaries a little bit, but obviously maintaining that respectful balance and, um, you know, realizing that people can be involved. It's not just the club, like it's a, like that awareness part is, is just so much of it. So that's mainly the main part. So just keeping that going, I think that will be accepted and will go on regardless. And that's just such an crucial part with, you know, raising the issue and raising that um, socially sort of accountability within people. Yeah. Thank you. I have one more, just for a student <laughs> audience. Sure. Um, so uh, if you were to give any advice to the senior ones sitting in this room right now, yeah. what would you tell them about their future global actions? Global action plan. Um, I would say start thinking about it right away. Um, thinking about you know what your pa like what you're passionate about, the issues yeah. you see. And I know in the preliminary days of our global leadership training, um, we talked about the issue, but finding the gap that exists. Mm -hmm. So finding the area where it's necessarily not talked about so much, so you fill that sort of void. And also in terms of assignments, you know do them on time because they pile up, you know? Yes. So maintaining that healthy balance throughout and then you'll be set to go by the end. And just realize that you're doing it, you know, no one's like, you know, forcing you to do that. You jump onto the Global Leadership Diploma because you want to be that active, conscious member of the community. You want to, you know, do something for yourself and those people around you. So realizing that it's, you know, you're in it for um, the benefit of everyone and yourself. And although it might be hard work at times, you know, the final product you get is going to be great, so. I mention one last thing. Um, yeah. In the presuming that it's all going to go well with the idea of the club, maybe yes. consider marketing when you when, like because I know you think I'm not sure if folks will sign up or things. Yeah. Before you leave, you know, you might want to think of okay, well, how can we make this attractive to folks, yeah. or that they might want to, you know, whatever that means. Be yeah, it for sure. The snazzy board or the whatever it would be. Like there may be mm -hmm. some things mm -hmm. that you can kind of just get a handle on of how to make it um, something that you think will be, you know interesting to mm -hmm. folks enough mm -hmm. to sign up for it, especially because it is something of such a great passion to you. So yeah. Yeah. But, right, for sure. But thank you for a great Okay, thank you. And yeah. thank you for the sales pitch for the S one. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you.